Amen. If you have your Bible, let's just not take any more time. Go straight into the scriptures. If you have your, your Bible with you, I will open to Psalm 92 and read from verse 12 and verse 13. Psalm 92 and I'll read from verse 12, 13 and 14. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow, grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in all age and they shall be fresh and flourishing. Someone say Amen. It's a, such a powerful promise, such a wonderful verse. But I want you to focus your attention on a few words here. One is righteous, the righteous. So this promise is given to a righteous person, a righteous person. Now we as Christians believe righteousness is something that we get from God as a gift. Righteousness is not something we get through, through working. We get it as a gift and then we work it through. In other words that you can only reflect the righteousness you have received. You cannot reflect a righteousness you haven't first received. Most people try to reflect the righteousness they achieve but we as Christians we only reflect the righteousness we receive from God. In other words you are like a moon. A moon has no light of its own. A moon only reflects the light from the sun. If the moon doesn't receive the light from the sun it has no light to give and same thing is with the righteousness we put only the righteousness we only show the righteousness that God gives us. Amen. That means that we cannot give righteousness that we haven't received. You can't express, live out a righteousness. You haven't got it from God. If you don't get it from God, you're going to try to achieve it and you will fail. It's like a moon trying to produce light. It will always fail. A moon is just a ball of dirt. So are you. You're a ball of dirt. Round is a square. And so uh, you're just a ball of dirt. Your tendencies are sinful. So are mine. The only righteousness that I have in my life and you have in yours is when you reflect the righteousness from the Son of God. Amen. And you are righteous. Not because you achieved it but because you receive it from God and then you project it. You reflect that righteousness on other people. If your reflection is bad, check your reception. Check where you receive it. Check that part. Amen. If you can go back to the verse, it says the righteous will flourish and I want you to see that the psalmist mentions word flourish at least three times. He says the righteous will flourish then he says if you are planted in God's house for those of you who are just visiting church you know you believe that you shouldn't you know belong to a church. I really want to challenge you. You need to be planted in the Lord's house. It says you will flourish and then at the end it says if you get old you will still flourish. Three times flourishing flourishing. God wants you to flourish. God wants you to advance. God wants you to get ahead. God wants you to climb the ladder. God wants you to conquer. God wants you to succeed. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to succumb the opposition. God wants you to get ahead. God wants you to flourish. Somebody say flourish. There is something as important as reaching success. It's learning how to define it. The problem many people have is not that they're not reaching for success is that they haven't defined what success first looks like. And if you are trying to reach for something you haven't defined, you will always fail because you won't know. Have you reached it? What does it look like? And he says in here, the righteous will flourish. That means to be successful as a Christian is God's will for you. That's no that's already settled for us. In our church we believe at the church of Jesus Christ we believe God wants you to be successful. The problem happens is when we all try to define what success looks like. I posted uh, on Facebook yesterday, shared a uh, few images from Architect fan page where they posted a guy who's standing on a bus station and missed a bus, looks at a guy who's riding a bike and says, I wish I could have a bike, then I'll be successful. A guy riding a bike looks at another person driving some beaten up car but he drives. He says, I wish I could have a car, only then I will be successful. A guy is driving a car, looks at somebody driving a Ford, says, I wish I could have a Ford, then I will be successful. A person driving a Ford looks at somebody driving a BMW, says, I wish I could have a BMW, then I'll be successful. A person driving BMW looks at somebody driving a Porsche, says, I wish I could have a Porsche, then I'll be successful. 
a person driving Porsche look at somebody having a private jet and says I wish I could have a private jet then I'll be successful as long as you compare to another person if you allow your neighbor to define your success for you you will always live in competition with someone else and you will never find your true success flourishing is God's will for you and I have a news for you this morning God has solved the problem for you and I he has defined what it's like for you to flourish what does it mean for you to be successful and God defined that today in this verse God gave you an example he didn't use Warren Buffett Bill Gates he didn't use a person on the street he didn't use me and he didn't use your neighbor he didn't even use your parents he didn't use your role models or your mentors as a model of what it means to be successful God used a tree to model it to you what does it mean to be flourishing in life what does it mean to be successful God says when you are like a palm tree that's how you when you're successful and so for me I want to dig deeper and find out what is this palm tree is because I am successful God wants me to be successful and I want to know in which areas should I stretch in which areas I should advance in which areas I should overcome and be blessed now unfortunately in Tri-Cities we don't have palm trees our summers they demand palm trees but they don't grow here our uh, scorched a desert area for which we welcome there's few other people that moved into two choice cities we welcome you into choice cities but it's not a city of palms it's the city of those little bushes that will run the highway and scratch your new car but that's about it no palms in here but if you do a little bit of studying you will find the palm trees are very unique trees very peculiar trees and in a very short time I am going to give you 10 characteristics of a palm tree which will define success for you my goal this morning is to define what it is to be successful what is success in God's eyes because success in your work might mean to be the best you know surgeon uh, a businessman a nurse a doctor a teacher if you're playing basketball success means hitting the ball through the hoops if you are playing football success means carrying that ball into the touch zone if you are you know in church success means you know people coming to Jesus Christ you know if you are working on the house success means building the house without you know making good money on time and will not get sued you know success in different places mean different things well what does it mean to be successful in life the first thing about the palm tree I want you to keep in mind is the palm tree is one of the only trees that cannot burn you cannot use the wood of a palm tree for fire because it simply will not burn as other trees I think the application of this is that the first place where you start as a successful person is when you have an eternity that is absent from going to hell if you have a successful life on this earth and when this 70 years on this earth ends and you are going to go to a place where the Bible talks about hell and let me tell you something God invented hell Jesus talked 33 times about hell which is about 11 times a year about uh, once a month Jesus had a sermon on hell and Jesus introduced to us and says that hell is a real place that God created not for us but for devil and for his angels and people are going into hell who refuse God's love and who choose Satan's ways and Satan's plans when Jesus talked about hell he used the word Gehenna Gehenna it's it's a word that is strange to us but to those days to those people it simply meant like a garbage cosmic garbage dump so if I say a garbage dump in there in West Richland somewhere or in Pasco where all the garbage men they bring all the garbage and dump it there then the truck comes and pushes that in then we put fire burn it put the layer of of grass on it and you know and it moves they move on to some, some other place that's exactly what hell was this word Gehenna meant in Jerusalem there was a cosmic garbage dump where people brought all of their garbage over there they brought their dead dead animals they brought their 
their waste uh, they brought all of these things that were nasty and horrible they brought it there it smelled really 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 bad it had a very very horrible smell the dogs would go at night and gnash their teeth trying to find some raw flesh the worms will go in there and eat things and people would set fire constantly to burn those things so the smell will stop so when Jesus talked about hell he says this is what it's like when everything that is thrown outside of heaven will be there he said there will be fire there will be worms there will be gnashing of teeth he says it will be outer darkness it will be everything that's not going to be inside of God's holy circle is going to be there that's what hell is going to be and as a Christian your success is not becoming the best even in your workplace your success starts avoiding cosmic garbage dump called hell if you don't make any money if you don't ever reach your dreams on earth but you avoid hell you're the most successful person on this earth somebody say amen, amen. the second thing about palm trees a palm tree is evergreen palm tree is always green and that speaks to us about our salvation not only we avoid hell as Christians as righteous people but as Christians we are going into heaven you may say well it's the same thing avoiding a place and getting into another place is not always the same thing when we avoid eternity from God the second characteristics that defines our success is that we spend eternity with God that we will have a salvation that is not lost but salvation that will last for eternity life has three stages the first stage is in the mother's womb it lasts about nine months some of us got out of there earlier some of us stayed there a little bit longer then there comes the stage on the earth which we are in right now it lasts 70 years according to psalms some of us gonna stay here a little bit longer others will opt out a little bit earlier and after this stage will come the third stage which will be eternity in eternity there will be no time in eternity there will be no end you may say i don't believe in eternity well it's very simple when you were in the mother's womb you didn't believe in the earth either isn't that interesting when you come out came out of the mother's womb everybody was crying and when you're going to come out of the womb of the earth everyone's going to be crying too both times people are crying but when the baby leaves the womb the baby doesn't die the baby graduates to another world that is more spacious and more bigger when you die physically your real you is not going to die it will graduate into another world where there is more space no limit no time no night and there is no end that is called eternal life amen and when you are in the womb you may be doubting the existence of your mommy because you can't see her but she is as real as you you may be on the earth today and you may say I don't believe God exists because I can't see him well just rewind a little bit back when you were in your mother's womb you couldn't see your mommy either but if you wouldn't have a mommy there would be no you if there would be no God there will be no you and just because you can't see him remember he holds the earth in the palm of his hand and listen to me hang in there very soon and very soon you will see him and you will know him because as a palm tree one of your success characteristics is being able to have eternal life and I want you to be mindful of that today number three a palm tree when it's surrounded with other trees creates an oasis a palm tree on its own cannot produce a lot of shade but when it's surrounded with other trees it will create an oasis we see that in Israel when they traveled through the wilderness and they didn't have any water and then they found bitter water and God healed that water and after that they came to this new place in Gedi where they saw an oasis a lot of palm trees about 70 palm trees this speaks to us that one of the successes of life is being surrounded with other people like mind who have same values same dreams and passions inspirations as you what it does is it creates a blessing it's a success if you are successful and you are alone if you're not surrounded with the group of people with the team of mentors with the team of friends who challenge you inspire you like elevator takes you up instead of taking you down you already successful person 
we just had a snow this week that fell and a few weeks ago and we saw something very unique about snow one snowflake is the most fragile thing you could ever come in contact with so fragile that your warm body warm temperature that snowflake will fall on your hand and it will lose its characteristic it will turn into just a drop of water but when snowflakes combine together and they link up they become so powerful that they shut down schools flip cars over cause you to slide cause you to be afraid cause you to put on chains on your car cause your vehicle to lose its stability on the road how can something so fragile become such a big big force to be reckoned with when it links with other fragile things you can be small by your own but when you connect yourself with other people next thing that happens is you become a force to be reckoned with you become successful and you become powerful that's why home groups exist in the church that's why we as christians believe that we should not leave our company with one another you shouldn't plan to skip church you should plan to be in the church and not just come in and walk out but able to meet other fragile beautiful awesome snowflakes because united we stand and divided we fall amen one of the most successful things you can have in your life is to have a physical family and a spiritual family you might not have a lot but if you have these two things if you have eternal life and you have a group where you can grow where you can mentor and be mentored you already successful person someone say amen number four palm tree cannot be grafted unlike other trees that you can graft or you can put different branches into them and palm tree cannot receive other branches into it actually the statement goes like this if you want to kill a palm tree try to graft it a duplex but i've owned in, owned in richland and i planted an apple tree and this apple tree had four different branches and four different types of apple trees in one apple tree and that's why I bought it because I wanted to have four types of apples in one tree. Apples can do that. You can graft things into apples, apple trees. You cannot graft things into the palm tree otherwise you will kill it. You have to understand that as a Christian when you graft the world into yourself, when you begin to allow worldly things inside of you, worldly things, worldly mindsets, when you begin to you know allow drunkenness, when you begin to allow you know things that are sinful, things that are compromise your consciousness, what you do is you kill your witness, you kill your flourishing, you kill your success, you kill your tomorrow and that's why when you look at sin, sin always robs you financially, robs you physically, robs you relationally, robs you emotionally in every area. Why? Because you can be only as successful as your ability to resist temptation. If you want to welcome temptation into your life then kiss success goodbye. If you want to be prosperous financially and want to be sinning spiritually, you're going to have to have only one of them, not both of them. If you want to say, I want to have a good family, I want to be healthy, but I also want to, you know, sip and slip, flirt and fall, you know, trip and, and play around with sin, then I want to tell you something, make a decision. What do you want in your life? Do you want to flourish or do you want to sin? Because you can't do both at the same time. Success and sin don't go together now sinful people who choose sinful actions may have an appearance of success and might even have a, a temporary success that looks good on the Hollywood magazine but the genuine success that gives you peace at night that adds no sorrow and blesses your family and blesses your health that kind of success only exists in the life of holiness life of sin will give you a temporary pleasure with the permanent pain life of holiness will give you a permanent dis a a temporary discipline with the permanent blessing of God in Jesus name choose to be successful say no to sin for the sake of success and flourishing in your life number five palm tree thrives in the tropical area palm trees they thrive they succeed they they flourish in the area that are hot other trees they cannot survive in tropical areas because their roots are very shallow. 
palm trees can thrive and one of the very interesting ways is the roots are very deep and the roots go so deep into the soil looking for water and they eventually find water even in the tropical areas underneath of them and because of that they survive and they eventually thrive. If you are rooted in the soil you will not be controlled by the season of your life. If you are a successful person, if you are a palm tree, if you are a righteous person, there's one characteristic about you is that your greenness, your freshness, your success, your inner peace does not come from what's around you. It comes from where your roots are deep in the presence of God. As long as your joy is affected by your circumstances, you're not being a palm tree. The benefit of being a palm tree is that your inner life is affected by your soil, not your season. You may be going through a difficult season or a good season, but your inner joy is dependent on God's word and God's promise and on God's Holy Spirit that will never leave you and will never abandon you. Amen. If you are constantly like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down in your joy or in your sadness, I want to ask you today to become a palm tree. I'm going to ask you today to dig your roots deep. Spend time with God in the morning in prayer. Instead of just watching the news which are always have their own bias and have their own agenda and many times full of negativity, turn that off. Instead of putting your face in Facebook, put that aside and say, I'm going to check that a little bit later. I'm going to take first an hour or 30 minutes of my day and I will meditate on God's goodness. I will take time. I will come to church because church opens every morning, Monday to Friday at five o'clock. I will read God's word. I will pray. I will spend time with the Holy Spirit. I will let my roots go deep so I am not controlled by what's going on around me. If my boss is cranky, if one of my employees has a bad mood, if my wife is on her period, if my dog is having a crazy day, if the neighborhood is not doing good, the weather is not good, the president maybe something is not going good there, my politics are not doing well, I am not affected by that. Why? Because I'm a palm tree and I live by my soil, not my season. Can somebody say amen? my body maybe is giving up and you know the leg is hurting the back is hurting and you know I'm not meeting my goals I'm not fulfilling you know all of the things that I wanted to reach I still walk around with a spring in my step my shoulders squared my head lifted high not because I'm cocky not because I'm arrogant but I am rooted and I touch water every morning and I don't have to live by my season somebody say amen Even when you wake up and you are just not happy. Well happiness comes from happenings. Joy comes from God. So you don't have to be happy to be joyful. You don't have to ha be happy to be rejoicing in God because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. It means it comes from the Lord and it gives me strength. Even when I am not happy you have to still look at yourself even with the grin in your face. I am joyful. <laughs> And when you say that you will see your happiness will change. Your happiness will catch up. Can somebody say amen? Be a palm tree. Live by your root system, not by what's going on around you. Live by your soil, not your season. Number six, palm tree withstands abuse. Unlike other trees, if you cut their bark, their surface, they will die because their life is in their bark. Their bark is extremely sensitive. A palm tree is a very unique tree where its source of life is in the core not in the surface that means you can actually cut the bark of the tree completely and the tree will be naked hurting but it won't die the benefit of being a follower of Jesus the benefit of being a righteous person that one of the characteristics of being successful is not in your ability to dodge hurt rejection betrayal and offense but it's in your ability to overcome it. We have defined success as ability to have relationships where you don't get hurt. We have defined success as ability to go through life where everything works the way you want it to. But God in here says that your success is determined by your ability not to avoid pain but overcome pain. Because every man in the Bible who became successful actually had a lot of pain in their life. 
a lot of them including our Lord Jesus Christ but what made them different than the rest of the people is not that they were able to hide from it it's that they were able to face it and they were able to overcome it if you want to impact the community if you want to impact your family if you want to be a bridge to a hurting world remember every bridge in our city gets walked upon you will get walked upon you will get rejected you will be misunderstood sometimes on purpose at other times unintentionally you will get backstabbed your success is not in ability to find people who will love you so much that they will never hurt your feelings your success is becoming a person strong enough that if you cut my bark i will cry i will cry a river build a bridge and get over it but i will not die but I will not die. I will live and I will rise above that in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen? You know the way we breathe is we inhale and exhale. The way we eat is when we partake food we also have a system in our body that eliminates food. The way our cars work is that we have an exhaust pipe in the system in the world in the vehicle in our body the way everything is designed you have to take something in and they give something out but many times in our hearts this is how it works we're like a sponge we're taking all of the hurt all of the rejection all of that you know those things that people didn't show us love that they should didn't give us the support that they should have and we're taking that in and we don't have an exhaust pipe to let it all out we keep that we keep that we keep that and then we with the PhD with a six digit income with a beautiful car, good appearance, a faithful attender of the gym, everything is good on the outside and this person just snaps and you're like what's going on they've been taking things inside without having a place where they let it out if your body would not eliminate the food you take you would be dead in a month if you take all that off life offers but if you don't eliminate that through forgiveness and letting it go through shaking it off sometimes you will spiritually die not because your friends are annoying and crazy and hurtful it's because the world you live in is painful and broken even Jesus told his disciples if you go around telling people about peace and love and forgiveness they will reject you but I'll give you a secret when you walk out of their city and they rejected you he says take all their dust and shake it off of your feet so you walk into a new city new season as though you've never been in the city that rejected you if you walk around you know one of the reasons I don't allow my brother's dog inside of the house is because she runs around on the backyard and she has her feet and they are dirty and she doesn't know how to shake them off and if she walks into the house which I let her in into my car and it has beautiful black seats and she took she doesn't care she took her paws and put fingerprints all around my beautiful seats that's exactly what happens when you went through a hurt and pain and you don't shake it off you will go into a new relationship mad angry cranky and the other person like, what's going on with you but these are fingerprints of the previous hurts that were not dealt with and Jesus says shake it off if you move into a new season shake it off if you come to a new church shake it off if you walk into a new relationship shake it off if you begin a new business opportunity why because you will make it impure by the impurities of your past can somebody say man being successful is not your ability to find people who will never hurt you it's in your ability to learn to be big enough to overcome that amen number seven palm tree breaks bands means palm tree breaks chains if you put a chain around a palm tree once the palm tree grows it will snap that chain if you put a chain around other trees when they grow they will allow that chain to grow into the tree and become a part of the tree the benefit of being a successful person is not that you don't have weaknesses and you don't have bad habits to break it's that you don't allow weaknesses and bad habits to become a part of who you are 
and you don't become lazy justifying those weaknesses but you become persistent in knowing that if I grow this will snap if I grow this will snap smoking will snap that pornography will snap the negativity will snap that anger will snap these things will snap even laziness it will snap my past will snap what I gotta do is I gotta keep growing sometimes you get freedom by coming to Jesus but there are many areas you get freedom by growing in Jesus Jesus says whom the son sets free is free indeed and two verses later he says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free the word know is the same word in Genesis where it says Adam knew his wife so it speaks of an intimate relationship the word truth is the same word where Jesus said I am the truth in other words Jesus says there are times I come and I touch you and you become free if you don't get freedom that way go back into your study hall begin to grow begin to know me more and knowing me more will set you free as you grow you will be free can somebody say amen the next thing about palm tree is the palm tree number eight bends during the storm other trees they don't they're not as flexible and they usually fight those storms a palm tree bends during the storm and therefore it doesn't break during the storm in the scripture there is a lot of storms that happen in the writings of the bible let me mention to you just three one of them was the jonah storm everybody remembers jonah guy who got swallowed by a very big fish jonah was in the storm because he committed sin and the boats start shaking and getting rocky they threw jonah out and the storm ended some storms you end up in your life are because of God. God is trying to wake you up. Not punish you, not hurt you, but wake you up. And the best way to get rid of that kind of storm is throw the garbage overboard. When you throw the garbage overboard, the storm will end. For some people, it's to throw the drugs overboard. Throw the cigarettes, throw the bottle overboard, throw some relationship that is pulling you down, some relationship that is destroying you, throw it overboard and quickly storm stops. There was another storm in the Bible, it was the storm disciples were in. This storm was caused by the devil and disciples had Jesus in the boat sleeping. They bore him to sleep. When you either talk so much or don't talk at all, and you put another person to sleep Jesus falls asleep that means he was not they were not keeping him interested in anything he falls asleep the storm comes and disciples in that storm they don't necessarily fight the devil they wake up Jesus and then the storm ends if you notice that the storm comes into your life purely a hundred percent from the devil and generational curses let me ask you a question have you put Jesus to sleep through your prayerlessness have you not been talking to God for so long that God in your life, not over the universe, but in your life, He's asleep. He's not dead. He's not gone. He's just sleeping. If there is a storm in your life, wake up Jesus. Start praying. Start seeking God's face. Start fasting. Start waking up the Lord. But there was one more storm and that was Paul in a storm. Paul was in the storm not because of the devil and Paul was not in the storm because of God. Paul was in the storm because the captain of the ship ignored the warning by Paul. Someone in authority made a mistake and they caused Paul to get into problems because of someone else's making and when Paul was in the storm he didn't wake up Jesus, he didn't throw anything overboard. Paul had to survive by learning how to swim. There are storms where you have to care more about the salvation of your soul than salvation of your ship. There are storms where you just have to learn honestly to get it out, to just get it through, to just plow it through. But the most beautiful part about every storm in the Bible, all of them ended. All of them ended. If you're a palm tree, you won't die by your storm because you will bend during the storm. You will know where to go during your storm and it's not to a bar, it is to prayer. 
it is not to a bottle it's to the Holy Spirit it is not to a joint and saying no I just need me some drugs to relax my mind you will say no 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 I just need me some Jesus I just need me some hungry generation worship music to get me through the storm you will swim through it you will come out of it all storms end and after the storm you'll be right back up to the glory of God can somebody say amen put your hands together for Jesus Christ number nine the older the palm tree the sweeter the fruit the older the palm tree the sweeter the fruit this is a very big encouragement because many people they are afraid about their future people are anxious today about the retirement but I have a news for you today a successful person according to God's definition has his life get better as they get older your body might not get better your life can get better as you get older the kingdom of this world as described by prophet Daniel starts with a golden head goes bronze silver metal and then at the end the foot of that king the feet of that kingdom are metal are metal and dirt but God's king so the kingdom of this world starts gold and then it gets, gets cheaper cheaper worse worse until it becomes almost dirt at the end but God's kingdom is completely opposite God's kingdom starts with a small seed becomes a tree and then becomes a very 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 big force God's kingdom starts a small rock and then it grows into a big mountain God's kingdom doesn't start gold and turns to dirt it starts dirt and turns to gold in God's kingdom it's not how you start it's how you finish in God's kingdom your best days are not behind you they're always in front of you in God's kingdom your front windshield is always bigger than your rearview mirror in God's kingdom it's completely opposite I want you to be optimistic about this coming year I want you to be optimistic about the future of your family. I want you to be optimistic about your career and about your walk with God because as a palm tree your, your fruit is not gonna get sour or worse as you go. It will get better, sweeter, you'll become stronger for the glory of God. Somebody say amen. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. And lastly, a palm tree cannot live in cold. Palm tree cannot live in the cold when it's cold a palm tree begins to suffer and I believe this applies to you as well when the atmosphere of your life is negative pessimistic full of doubts anxiety you suffer your life suffers and you may blame everything on the cold but today I want to give you a challenge not to be what is thermometer is a reflector of the temperature thermostat is the reflector of the temperature not to be a thermometer just like I was thinking okay thermometer is reflector of the, of the temperature right I keep mixing, mixing those two things up. I remember I preached a message and had a whole board about it. And the thermometer is the one that tells you the temperature in the house. But a thermostat is the one that changes the temperature in your house. Let me ask you a question. Are you a thermometer that what's happening inside of you is just a reflection of what's happening around you? You're cranky because your life is hard. You're confused because well things are really difficult at work. You're not happy well because we're behind in our bills. You're sad because well I've been to the doctor and I found out that I have these symptoms of this sickness. And you're a thermometer. You're constantly reflecting your circumstances. Or you're a thermostat who constantly chooses how and where those circumstances are gonna change. Somebody went to my ter thermostat yesterday upstairs in the office when it was really cold but they made a decision. It's cold now but we're gonna get it hot. They turned it to 90 degrees. My goldfish died. Moment of silence for my goldfish. My goldfish died. I came in today and I see a goldfish swimming on the top. And I know what that means. She's not swimming on the top, she's dead. And I was so outraged. This heat stayed there for a whole night. It was so hot there. 
it's cold outside you know why it's hot there because there is a power of a thermostat you know that you can be filled with faith when your world is falling apart because you're a palm tree because you have the power to choose to believe God doesn't ask you to believe when you see he asks you to believe when you don't see anything and because you believe you will see faith honors God and God honors faith it honors Jesus to believe him when all the symptoms contradict him the Bible calls you a believer not a doubter the Bible doesn't call you a feeler a believer the Bible says you belong to a household of faith the Bible says you have a word of faith the Bible says he's giving you a gift of faith a spirit of faith so you will live a life of faith my friend you cannot operate in a cold atmosphere when it's depression when it's anxiety when it's fear when you are anxious about everything at that time your potential your gifts and the grace of God begins to be short-sighted short -short it begins to be cut off and you begin to suffer and the problem is not with the problems the problem is that you have switched from being a thermostat to being a thermometer how did Titanic sunk was it because too much water was in the ocean no Titanic sunk because Titanic allowed a crack where the water around Titanic got inside and as a big ship as Titanic was it couldn't operate it couldn't go forward it only went down you and I are not bigger than Titanic but the same principle applies to you when the problems around you get inside you won't go forward you will only go to the bottom my message to you today be a palm tree choose to change the cold atmosphere of your heart doubt and fear into faith optimism God is on my side I will be healthy my family will be good I will prosper I have salvation I have God on my side and everything is going to be all right somebody say amen